Let's be clear right from the start of this video. What's happening in Ukraine right now is nothing short of abhorrent. The inevitable loss of human life, the turmoil it will bring on families, the unnecessary destruction, young children losing parents. For what? Ego? I by no means want to make light of this situation, so there'll be no silly jokes or sketches in this video. But after all, this is a personal finance and investing channel, so I do think there is a worthwhile discussion to be had. My thoughts genuinely go out to anybody directly or indirectly affected by this crisis. Stay strong and hope for better days. Now, into the video. The situation we understand is desperate and it belongs in history. Who would have thought 2022 Europe would look like this? U.S. stocks opened sharply lower after Russia began its invasion of Ukraine last night. Almost every single Dow component was in the red, and the Nasdaq began in bear market territory. Chernobyl now, we have been told it has been taken by Russian forces. Russian troops reportedly taken full control of the area around Chernobyl's nuclear power station, including the plant itself. Crude prices have jumped more than $20 a barrel since the start of the new year. On years of sanctions on Russia's energy sector. If the U.S. takes steps, for example, like removing Russia from SWIFT, the international payment system, that's a move that's seen as an escalation on the economic front, and that will have effects that will trickle down in the market. Who would have thought 2022 Europe would look like this? The Russian stock market is on its knees. As I record this, the market is closed for the fourth straight day in a row, which would be the longest pause since 1998. They've already doubled the interest rate over there in an attempt to shore up the currency and have suspended interest payments to foreign bondholders. Investors can't even run for the exits because they're bolted shut. Russia has also announced that it intends on deploying $10 billion worth of its wealth sovereign fund in buying up local stops in an attempt to try and slow down the bleeding. European Union ambassadors have also agreed to exclude seven major Russian banks from the SWIFT financial messaging system. Influential index providers MSCI and FTSE Russell are cutting Russian equities from their benchmarks from next week, and S&P Dow Jones indices are currently considering whether to take the same action. As much as half of Russia's international reserves have been frozen as a result of Putin's invasion of Ukraine, and it has led many investors to quote, the Russian equity market is currently uninvestable, and it's really the end of the Russian financial market we are used to. I want to take a moment to talk to you about home bias. This is the idea that when investors build an investment portfolio, they have a tendency to favour stocks from their own country. This is both a throwback to when it was more difficult to acquire equities in foreign markets, but it's also just the case that people prefer to invest in what they're familiar with rather than venturing into the unknown. Well, if this next stat is to be believed, the average Russian citizen has a serious home bias problem, a big one and they are seriously feeling the effects of it. Russians have 95% of their investments in Russian companies. There's one lesson to learn at least. So, when it comes to buying low and selling high and looking for the dip, well, here is a huge one. So is this an opportunity for braver investors, or is this just a disaster waiting to happen? Firstly, to rationalise this argument, I think we need to park the morality element of this to one side for a moment. There will be plenty of people watching that wouldn't want to invest in Russia on a purely moral basis, as potentially profiting from an event such as this could easily be seen in bad taste. I totally understand this viewpoint, and to be honest, if I really sit and think about it, it's probably one that I share. But let's just take a look at this from a purely investment angle. The first problem is the market is closed. Even if you want to invest there, it's not likely to be straightforward. US-based Russian ETFs are still trading, however, so it's not entirely impossible. There are four of them, although only two of them have significant assets under management. The VanEck Russia ETF, or RSX, and the iShares MSCI Russia ETF, or ERUS. We have already seen money pouring into Russian ETFs, mainly seems to be targeted at defence stocks. This could be a sign of investors looking to buy the dip, buy these Russian companies at these beaten up valuations in the hope that things are actually over pretty quickly 
and when things return to normal, they'll make a healthy return. Outside of defence stocks, the other perceived benefit in the short term is thought to be the energy sector, as this crisis drives up the price of oil and gas. The largest ETF in Russia, as I mentioned earlier, the Van Eck Russia ETF, or RSX, has about 41% of its 1.2 billion assets under management in the energy sector, so it certainly looks well positioned to take advantage of that. As far as I can tell, there seems to be two types of investors going into the Russian stock market at the moment. Optimists that are hoping things will be over quite quickly and return to normal, and then pessimists who are hoovering up defence and energy stocks. Either way, there is money going in. But remember, we buy companies, not countries. When we come to reflect on this in years to come, it will be another scar on the investment graph that is the history of the stock market. The further away we get, the smaller this wound will appear in the rearview mirror. It's true to say that when it comes to investing, there is always something to worry about. In the 50s, there was a great fear about nuclear war and everyone was building bunkers in their garden. Rolling on 70 years, we have more nuclear weapons than ever, but people aren't building bunkers anymore. They've just found something else to worry about. If you're looking for a reason not to invest, you can always find one. Risk is simply the chance of the outcome not being what you expected it to be. And for me personally right now, investing in Russia, the risks are too great. Historically, Russia has never been a country well understood by foreign investors. Winston Churchill once described them as a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Corruption and a severe lack of transparency are big barriers to business. And don't forget their dependency on oil makes them really vulnerable to commodity price swings. Add to this the new volatility and things have just got a whole lot more complicated. If I bring the morality argument back in, it's clear my money will not be heading towards Russia, no matter how big the dip might be. To be honest with you, following an aggressive buy the dip strategy is fraught with problems. And if you watch this video next, I will explain why and what a better strategy might be. Thanks for watching.